It's 3.30 in the morning. We're at over 10,000 feet. What were we thinking? Oh, it is incredibly windy up here. And this next section of the hike is super exposed. We're just climbing right on the side of the mountain. Good. We're Karen Lane. We've spent the last four years traveling to 100 countries. But 2020 brought us back to the United States, where we purchased a converted Sprinter van to spend the summer exploring our home country. After a few weeks of renovations and upgrades, we hit the road to discover that the state of Missouri likes building really big things. Kansas is home to the best barbecue sandwich in the world and has a surprising amount of natural beauty. During our first week of full-time van life, we drove over 1,400 miles across the U.S. to meet up with a couple of our best friends in Estes Park, Colorado. Once we arrived, we traded our van for a cabin and spent the week hiking in Rocky Mountain National Park fly fishing the Big Thompson River, and enjoying quality time with great humans who we don't get to see very often. Love y'all! Bye! We just said a sad goodbye to Jordan and Julianne, but we are super excited to spend the rest of the week exploring Rocky Mountain National Park. We've been on the road now for over two weeks and we've pretty much been in vacation mode the entire time, minus the small explosion in the van. <laughs> it's leaky. So it's time for a life admin day. traveled for four years straight before COVID and believe it or not, this is the first time we have ever used a laundromat. Before we would just book an Airbnb that had a wash or we were somewhere cheap enough that we could just pay someone to do it. I guess this is just part of our new routine now that we're living out of a van. Since we ignored most of our responsibilities this past week while we were with friends, we've come to our favorite place in town for fast, free Wi-Fi. This has to be the best place in Estes Park to get a little work done. You can go inside, grab yourself a coffee, and then come sit out on the porch with this incredible office view. So not only is the Stanway Hotel a great place to work, but it also has a super interesting history. It was built in 1909 by Freeland Stanley, the guy who created the Stanley Steamer. And supposedly it's one of the most haunted hotels in America. It's actually the hotel that inspired Stephen King's The Shining. And on a lighter note, part of Dumb and Dumber was also filmed here. There you go. So we were actually hoping to stay inside of Rocky Mountain National Park this week, but I think because of COVID, everyone is camping this summer. We're very last minute planners and when we went to book, it was completely full. Thankfully, uh, when we were staying here last week with our friends in one of these cabins, we made friends with the owner and they're allowing us to park the van here for a few nights for free. And it's only five minutes outside of the National Park, which is important because it's gonna shave some time off of how early we have to be up tomorrow morning. It is only 7.30, but we are getting ready for bed right now because tomorrow we are going to attempt to summit our first 14er. And I think it's gonna be one of the most physically demanding days of my entire life. Not to mention, we're setting our alarms for 1.45 in the morning. That can't even be considered <gasps> sleep. That's a nap. We're, we're taking a short a nap. nap. Setting my alarm for 1.45. I'm so nervous.
east on Colorado 66 toward Village Drive. What are we doing? These people. Oh my gosh, it is so dark. This is nuts. Real quick, before we begin this crazy trek, we wanted to tell you about a new safety feature that we've added to the van that makes us feel a lot better about leaving it in random dark parking lots in the middle of the night for long periods of time. We're traveling around with a lot of expensive camera equipment and we really just wanted to be able to walk away from the van and just not have to worry about it. That's exactly what our Simply Safe home security system allows us to do. The great thing about Simply Safe is that it's completely customizable. Whether you live in a house or a van, you can jump online and order the exact parts you need. They're delivered straight to your house and it takes less than an hour to set up. But if you live in an 80 square foot home like ours, it takes a lot less time than that. Let me quickly show you our setup. Hidden behind our fake plant is the base station and this is like the brains of the operation. We've installed four entry sensors, one on the side door, one on the back door, passenger door, and driver's side. The way that these work is that when these are separated, it sets off the alarm. Alarm off. <laughs> that was so loud. Everything's fine. There's a hidden glass break sensor right here. We also have this panic button, so if somebody's trying to break in in the middle of the night, we can manually set off the alarm and hopefully scare them away without any further confrontation. And whenever we leave, just hit the away button on our key fob and it automatically arms the whole system. And last but not least, as soon as our hotspot comes in, we're gonna be able to hook up this camera, which will allow us to see live video of what's happening inside of our van from our phone at any time. If you can't tell, we're pretty excited about this setup and it definitely gives us more peace of mind. And if you have a stationary home, you can even take it one step further by signing up for their professional monitoring system. That way, if a break-in were to occur, they're able to call and dispatch the authorities for you. If you're interested in protecting your home with Simply Safe's customizable home security system, click the link in the description to learn more. And now, <laughs> and now for what can only be described as one of the most tiring days of my entire life. Top three for sure. I'm tired just thinking. It's 3.12 and the 15 mile journey to the summit of Long's Peak has officially begun. I'm gonna be honest, this is terrifying. Walking through the middle of the woods and the only thing that we can see is a little dot that my headlight illuminates. And knowing that we're out here with bears and mountain lions, I haven't really thought about this part. We're coming. Don't need us. Don't be scared. Hello. Seven miles to go. We're a little over an hour into the hike. We made it two miles and we just popped up above the tree line where it's a lot colder and windier. Sun's coming. That's incredible. <sighs> oh, a little windy up here, but it's 5.30. We just made it past the halfway point. The sun is rising and I have so much energy. I think we're both feeling so much better than we thought we would right now. Absolutely. <laughs> we might be delirious, or maybe it's altitude. I feel great. This sunrise though, uh, <laughs> it's whoa. incredible. Wow. Got a little chilly when we stopped for the sunrise. Just to give this hike a little perspective. Long's Peak 
is the tallest mountain in all of Rocky Mountain National Park. It should be about a 12 hour journey round trip. We're covering 5,000 feet of elevation. I feel like my mouth is frozen. Only 50% of the people who attempt to summit actually make it. And not to get morbid, but I read that 60 people have died attempting this. So it's no walk in the park. But with that said, we've done a lot of research. We feel pretty well prepared and we're gonna give it our best shot. Woo, my hands are frozen. That's where we're going. Yeah. yeah, we're going through that little gap in the rock right there. That's called the keyhole and it's where the hike starts to get a little more technical. Also, it is so cold. We've stumbled upon some bathrooms at about 13,000 feet, and I figured why not continue the tradition of doing a bathroom tour? Wow, I feel like my face is frozen. All right. Wow, this must be the wind. Hmm. I've never seen a toilet like this before. Very private. I'm a fan. I'm pretty impressed. Same. It didn't smell great, but it was super clean. Yeah. Oh, I feel so light to the key hole. My pack on. Here we go. This is the exciting part. The keyhole route is a climb that requires scrambling on exposed narrow ledges, loose rock, and steep slabs. Sudden changes in weather may create high winds, lightning, rain, hail, snow, freezing temperatures, and ice covered rock at any time. A slip, trip, or fall could be fatal. Rescue is difficult and may take hours to days. Self-reliance is essential. Stay on route and be willing to turn around at any time. Safety is your responsibility. We've done a fair bit of serious trekking in the past, and we know how quickly things can go wrong. But after a relatively easy first six miles, this sign was a timely reminder not to get overconfident and never lose respect for the mountains. Now it feels like we're climbing a mountain. There's no trail, and the only way to figure out where you're going is to keep a lookout for these piles of rocks. Also, I somehow think the closer we get to the peak, the further away it looks. At least it's more intimidating close up. Are we getting closer? Is your heart beating as fast as mine? Yeah. made it across the boulder field and into the keyhole rock formation and look at this view that it just opened up to. Look at that. It is incredibly windy up here. And this next section of the hike is super exposed. We're just climbing right on the side of the mountain. It's super strong and we're about to just be walking on the side of a mountain. The huge cliff on one side and slippery rocks on the other. Let's do this, I'm breathing. I will say, so far, it looks a lot more intimidating from the keyhole. The trail is really well marked with these red and yellow dots. Hasn't been too bad yet. Wow. 
Oh, scary. <sighs> 30 minutes. It's getting really challenging. It's getting a lot harder to breathe. And somehow the stomach keeps looking further and further away. You good? Watch out, yeah. Feeling like we were almost there about an hour ago. And now I can see that we still have a long ways to go. Look at this though. Oh my gosh. We did it! Woo! Oh. I'm fucking like gonna cry. I can't believe. I can't believe we did it. Nate. It was stop and go there for a little while. <laughs> oh. We are standing on the tallest mountaintop in all of the, I can't talk. 360 views of the Rocky Mountains. We did it. I can't believe we made it. I'm very proud of us. Me too. It's amazing. That was hard. That was so hard. That was really hard. Incredible how it just opens up up here. Like we've been climbing straight up, and then you get up to the summit, and you just like have hundreds of yards of flat boulder fields. When we trekked to Everest Base Camp four years ago, we started the tradition of eating a Snickers at the end of every good hike. Oh, there's a world hard Snickers. <laughs> like completely oh. frozen. Did you break your tooth off? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the moment I've been waiting for all day. <sighs> no, cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Felt yeah. oh. good. I'm not gonna lie. I was doubtful for a while. There was a point between the keyhole and the summit about halfway where I didn't think we'd make it. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you. I feel like you handled it better than I did. Really? Uh huh. I was dying. All right, we're really only halfway done. We still have a long, sketchy climb back down the mountain. So I'm gonna put the camera away and we'll see you at the bottom as long as nothing super interesting happens. Oh, home. Might be one of the most proud I've ever been of you. I'm so impressed, for real. I can't believe we did it. Oh my gosh. Can you see how white my pinky toe is? I do still have all oh. my toenails. Oh my gosh. 
Look at that. That's gonna be a massive blister. My toes. Oh. Let me see yours. Oh, they're so gross. They're so white on the end. They're so gross. Wow. Ew. The way down was so long. First half of this hike was such a blur that I expected it to go so quickly. And the last half coming down just, I don't even remember it from three o'clock this morning. Ugh. 3.15. We left the summit at 9.45, which means it took us five and a half hours to get back down the mountain. The crazy thing is it only took us six hours to get up. The top part of the mountain is just so tactical that there's just no way to go fast on it. Oh, and uh, one interesting thing did happen. These ominous black clouds came out of nowhere, so we ended up running down the mountain for a couple hours, which is the main reason that we left so early this morning. The Rockies are known for afternoon thunderstorms and the summer so you really want to be down off the mountain at least into the tree line by early afternoon we almost got caught in a storm it still didn't make us any faster oh but between the 10,000 feet of elevation change and having to run back down the mountain my back like my shoulders and my knees are just completely wrecked everything hurts <laughs> everything even my arms how are my arms sore we're uh, gonna eat a pizza and then sleep until tomorrow because of COVID, everyone is camping this summer. Okay, you might subscribe. All right, thank you. I have a new stack that's not usually part of our laundry. Buffs, her face. <laughs> this was handicap. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, but just, I don't feel like you need to make a bathroom handicap accessible if you had to climb a mountain to get up here. <laughs> <laughs> We're standing on the tallest mountain peak in all of the Rockies. No, all of Rocky Mountain National Park. Oh. Oh, doing it. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, I already ate it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this always happens. 12 hours and 10,000 feet of elevation change later. We made it back home. <laughs> My feet have never hurt so bad. I can't believe we did it. I'm gonna sleep for two days. Never walking again. <laughs> that is Long's Peak. We climbed that mountain. <sighs>